Right, I'll start this video with the good news that my brother has just passed his test. In fact, I was in the middle of a previous video when I heard screaming, so I stopped and <laughs> just want to find out. But anyway, from that you, euphoria to objectives and firms, a massive topic in, uh, in A2 microeconomics. We tend to assume as economists that all firms will want to profit maximise. And profit maximisation occurs when marginal cost equals marginal revenue. I'm going to explain why in a future video. But that's what we assume, that firms will want to produce at this point. Why would they want to do that? Well, one, it will keep shareholders happy. Making, making maximum profits means their returns on dividends will be very high. They'll be pleased with that. Google recently uh, just reported massive profits, profits way higher than expected. What did that do to the share price? It increased it hugely. Shareholders were very happy. Other people were buying lots and lots of shares. So that's one main reason why firms want to profit maximise. Also, if firms are making large profits, they can reinvest those profits back into the business and build up the business like that. And they prefer doing it that way rather than taking out loans because the repayment on loans becomes very expensive. So reinvestment opportunities become uh, available through uh, making high profits. At the same time, to profit maximise, that will imply that firms need to be as efficient as possible. We know that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. So, if a firm is really, really efficient, it will minimise its total costs. So, lower, it will lower costs, which is good for the firm and it's also good for the consumer, because that will mean lower prices at the end as well. So, three major reasons why firms will want to profit, profit maximise. Okay? And that's what we assume as economists, that these uh, will outweigh any other types of objectives. But in truth, it might not be the case. Okay? So, why might a firm not want to profit maximise? Well, or why might it not profit maximise? What if the firm doesn't know where its marginal cost equals its marginal revenue? In fact, it's very difficult to work out a firm's marginal cost. Remember, in economics, marginal cost includes, yes, physical cost, but also opportunity cost. For a firm to know that perfectly is very difficult. So more realistically, what firms tend to do is use cost plus pricing, where they work out their long-run average cost position, which is much easier to do, and stick on a margin, maybe 10% margin on top, to give themselves a profit. That's more realistic. Okay, but knowledge of MC equals MR is difficult, in which case they can't be profit maximising. Also, if they're making huge profits, there's a greater risk of competition authorities, regulatory bodies, to investigate the firm. If they're making huge profits, maybe um, regulatory bodies, government bodies will think, well, potentially there might be something dodgy going on in this firm. Maybe there's some exploitation of consumers, maybe higher prices than there should be being set. In which case, these authorities will want to investigate. And these investigations are costly to the firm and will often lead to end results, which means that firms will not be able to profit maximise. Maybe the end result will be lower your prices or um, increased wages for staff or work more efficiently, I don't know. Something that will cost the firm uh, more money. So firms don't like investigations for that reason. Um, or maybe firms will have other objectives. Well, that seems odd. So profit maximisation has all these major benefits, but a firm might want to pursue other objectives. Why? And what other objectives? Let's have a look. And let's understand what other objectives might exist. Well, another major objective that firms might want to follow is that of profit satisfying. So I'll put that as number two. <coughs> okay, so firms might want to profit satisfies. Now, I've used that term, that word there, very, very purposefully. Okay, it's actually a combination of two words, of satisfy and sacrifice. Now, profit sacrificing occurs because there is a divorce of ownership and control, and control, and also, okay, because there's a conflict, well, as a result, there's a conflict between what the stakeholders want first of all let's define what are stakeholders well, stakeholders are essentially groups of people who have some sort of link to the company okay so groups of people who are influenced in some way by what the company does so that could be well certainly owners okay managers Workers are all influenced by how the company operates. Consumers are definitely stakeholders. Okay. Uh, government could well be a 
stakeholder, etc., etc. So all the key types of uh, individual groups who have got some link to how the company operates, they are stakeholders. So go back to the start. We have what we call a divorce of ownership and control. In many large firms, this occurs. Owners tend to be shareholders. Okay, so owners here tend to be shareholders. They're the ones who actually own the firm. Okay? Now their objective will simply be to profit maximize. Alright? That will be their objective. And that's how they'll want the firm to run. But are they in control of that? No. They own shares, but they've got no direct say to the running of the business. The people that run the business are the managers. Okay? Or maybe even the workers in some cases. They're the ones that control what actually happens in the business. In which case, we've got a divorce, we've got a, a difference in objectives. Okay? Because there is a divorce between who owns the company and who runs the company. All right? So shareholders will want maximum profits. Managers might not. Managers might want greater business size. Maybe they're not too worried about profit, they're worried about the size of the business. Because they get paid in salaries. So the greater the size of the business, the greater the salary they can ask for. But if it was workers that were controlling the business, maybe workers would want greater working conditions, maybe reduced hours, greater breaks, greater holidays. Okay? They want to enjoy their work more, in which case their objectives will differ from what the owners want. Right? Consumers will want lower prices. Okay? And that often will go against maybe profit maximization as well. So you've got a divorce between ownership and control. Okay? Owners will have um, the actual ownership of the, uh, of the firm, but the managers will control the running of it. And the two objectives might well be different. And more than just that, there'll be other conflicts between what stakeholders want too. All these stakeholders have different objectives. So how do you try and balance everybody? These stakeholders are very, very important for the firm. In truth, all of them should be happy. That's very important for a firm. But how can it balance the happiness of all stakeholders? Well, simply has the profit satisfies. Make a level of profit where we're maximizing the benefits to all stakeholders. Okay? And that level of profit will differ for each firm. But that's why maybe profit maximizing won't work, because we need to look after the, the, uh, the well-being. We have to look after the objectives of all different stakeholders that are part of the business too. All right? So profit satisfying might occur for that reason. Okay? But maybe more relevant, so within profit satisfying, so I'll talk about number two, so a different type of profit satisfying, but in truth, might imply no profit at all. It's simply survival. Okay? So make enough profit, in this case, just do enough to survive. Okay? So for many firms in the transport sector, this is very relevant, where there are very, very high fixed costs to start up, high capital costs, etc. And maybe there's huge competition in the industry, in which case survival is good enough. Okay? So that might well be an objective of firms too. Okay, but that'll be a short-term objective, maybe for a year or two, survive, and then they can build and look to probably maximize thereafter. Another objective for a firm might be to revenue maximize instead of profit maximize. Okay, and that occurs when the marginal revenue is equal to zero. So that's a specific point where revenue maximization can occur. So why would a firm want to revenue max and not to profit max? That seems an odd thing to want to do. Well, the main objective for that is to predatory price, is to drive out competition in the market. By revenue maximizing, the price charged by a firm will drop and the quantity produced will go up. Okay? By the price falling, that's going to drive out competition. It's going to mean more consumers will go to that firm, will mean that com competitors will suffer. So one reason might be to drive out competition using predatory pricing. Another reason might be, well, as quantity increases and the firm grows in size, the firm might benefit slightly from economies of scale. Okay, so two main reasons why, but the, the key thing is the whole competition reason, driving out competition by predatory pricing, the main reason to revenue maximise, and that occurs when MR equals zero. Okay. Another objective of a firm, major objective, might be to sales maximise. <coughs> Okay, and that occurs when AC is equal to AR. Now this in economics is the break-even level of output. When average cost equals the average revenue. You're not bringing in extra revenue and you're not making any losses. Okay? You're breaking even at AC equals AR. 
So here, the firm is worried simply about producing as much quantity as possible, selling as much stuff as possible. They're not worried about profits and revenues or anything like that. They just want to maximize the size of their business by selling as much as they can. And that occurs at this point, AC will say, oh, why would they want to do that? Well, here, size of the business is really important. So maybe the shareholders are not worried about profits. Maybe they're worried about the size of the business. Maybe that's another short-term objective. Maybe that's important to experience economies of scale in the short run, to then maybe look to profit maximize in the long run. Okay? But anyway, it all links to economies of scale. You want to increase the size of your business to fully have the chance to experience economies of scale which in the long run might act as quite a major barrier to entry. All right? So that's why maybe breaking even in the short run is a good idea. Another reason why that might be acceptable is because managers, their salary is very much linked to the size of the business. So managers might want to pursue sales maximization, make the business as large as they possibly can without making a loss. So then their salary is going to increase massively too. So again, it might be a managerial type of objective here. Another reason, in transport industries especially, you might have firms that are producing different types of products, okay? or firms that are offering different types of services. Well, maybe there's one service that a firm is offering that's actually making a loss. In which case, maybe another profit-making activity can subsidize the loss-making activity. In which case, the loss-making activity should just go up to where AC was L. It won't make sense for the loss-making activity to make a profit. Okay? You would simply want to expand production of the loss-making activity to where AC is equal to AR. Just break even, and that's good enough. Okay, so for cross-subsidization, um, sales maximizing, sales maximizing is, is adequate. So that's another way we might see that objective actually enforced. But the main reasons will be to fully explore economies of scale, benefit from those, and for managers to increase their salary level. Right, how does that all look on a diagram? Okay, so they are the four, that should have been the four, apologies. Um, <clears throat> how does that actually look on a diagram? Well, three of those four major objectives we can show on one diagram, which is very handy. And this is the first time that I'm putting cost curves and revenue curves together. Okay? <coughs> so, remember, the long run consists of many, many different short runs. So, firms are always in a specific short run. Okay, so we're going to use short run cost curves. I'm going to use imperfect revenue curves, because that's, again, quite realistic. So we're going to use a downward sloping demand curve, which is our AR curve. Our marginal revenue curve is going to be twice as steep. So that's marginal revenue. We're going to have an average cost curve. That just looks like that. And we're going to have a marginal cost curve that cuts the average cost at the lowest point. Okay. So here we're going to have costs, revenue, and price. The reason we have price is because the average revenue curve is also the price. And we're going to have output of quantity on the x-axis. Okay, so what we said, okay, if I just kind of put these points down, so profit max, we've said occurs where NC equals MR, red max, revenue max, occurs where MR is equal to zero, and sales max occurs where AC is equal to AR. Let's actually pick these points out on the diagram. So if the firm wants to profit maximize, it will produce where MC is equal to AR. Let's call that Q max. Okay, that profits being maximized. How do we know that? Well, profits is just your average revenue take away your average cost. So let's find that. Let's go to the average revenue. At that point of production, there's the average revenue being made, but there's the average cost being made. So this entire box there, okay are what we call supernormal profits. Okay, supernormal profits being made there. And the price being charged, I'll call that P max. We know that's the price because the AR curve also tells us the price. Alright, so that's the profit maximizing. We know why firms will want to do that. Revenue maximization occurs by MR is equal to zero, which is down here, so let's call that Q rev. Okay, move up to the average revenue curve to find the price. Well, that P rev. So remember what we said, firms will want to revenue maximize in order to drive out competition mainly. Yes, they'll increase or the benefit from economies of scale slightly as quantities increase, but 
they'll actually reduce their prices. And in reducing their prices, they can drive out competition. So we can see that on the diagram, how that works out. They're still making a profit. Okay? They're still making a super normal profit here. Because there's AR and there's AC. There's a massive gap between. So that rectangle there represents super normal profits. It's not as big as the profits made at Pmax, but still profits being made. In truth, if I draw the average cost curve higher, okay, then actually the firm might be making a loss. In truth, the firm doesn't matter too much. Okay, the firm doesn't mind that too much, apologies. Because um, it's a short-term objective to drive our competition. If that means making a loss in the short term, so be it. We saw that in the 90s with the newspapers, Murdoch trying to um, drive up competition over the newspapers. And also we saw in the bus market in the 1980s, okay, different types of bus companies were using predatory pricing here to drive up competition. Okay, and that's how they were doing it. Also we've got sales maximization. That occurs at the break-even point where average cost is equal to average revenue. Let's do that. Call that Q sales. Okay, at that level, there is no super normal profit being made, just normal profits being made at that level. Alright, but you can see here the quantity value is at its maximum without making a loss. Alright, so that's why firms want to do that because they can fully benefit from economies of scale. Managers will be happy because maybe they can demand higher salaries as well. Okay, and that actually leads to the lowest price of all three at P, I'm just call it PS. Okay, so there are the three major objectives you can get on the diagram. We can't really show profit satisfies from the diagram because that level of profit will be very dependent on a specific firm. But also other objectives are not shown on here too. Maybe there are firms, maybe public sector firms, that, uh, whose main objective is simply to provide a social service. Okay? To provide um, output of a certain good at the lowest possible price. So maybe network rail is a good example. Okay, provide a rail network, provide the greatest um, amount of rail track possible at the lowest possible price. Okay, because firms need to use rail, it's a socially responsible thing to do. Therefore, that should be our main objective. Forget revenues and profits, just produce the maximum amount of rail track at the lowest possible price. So there are other objectives as well that are not included on the diagram, which are very much linked. And when it comes to valuation, okay, we start with profit maximization is kind of the main assumption, why that might not work. And then you can bring in other objectives and say, well, why would a firm want to use other objectives? And often, it will be because there are conflicts between short-term and long-term goals. Okay, so maybe in the long-term, a firm will want to profit maximize, but to do so, in the short run, it needs to drive up competition, in which case revenue maximize in the short period and then increase the price later on. Maybe a firm will need to benefit from economies of scale in the short run to actually, drive, to actually act as a barrier to entry for new firms entering, or maybe they need to benefit from economies of scale to be competitive in the market, in which case sales maximizing in the short run is a good idea before then profit maximizing later. So maybe you've got a, uh, a short run versus long run conflict. Maybe you've got a growth versus profit conflict. Maybe growth is more important than short run rather than profit. Or maybe vice versa. Okay, in which case you can evaluate using all these different objectives. This is a very, very big topic, but actually a very good question to answer in the exam because it's quite straightforward and makes logical sense. So bear that in mind. Hope that all now makes a lot of sense. Thank you very much.